Welcome back to the Two Naughties podcast. I am your co-host Timmy Long and this is James Leonard, our other Hello. co-host. <laughs> so today we have a very, very special guest, fellow North Sider, Eddie Hennessy, who's also a well-renowned photographer from the North Side. Um, but a few years, Eddie also had a stroke and he's going to talk about his journey in recovery today and a little bit about what he does at the moment. So over to you, Eddie. Welcome. Hi, um, thanks for having me on. Um, so I, I, I got a stroke um, about uh, 12 years ago, 2008, um, major, major stroke. And um, um, it's a, uh, I couldn't talk for two years and I, I was in wheelchair for six months and um, be, before that I was sick for about 10 years and um, I didn't know what was wrong with me and I, I got misdiagnosed with bipolar and um, and um, and um, when I had the stroke, I, I, they found out uh, it was the heart disease that was uh, bringing me up and down. So they mixed takes that for mm. bipolar. Yeah. Oh my god, that's un- that's unreal, isn't it? Yeah, that's. Do you know when you say you were sick, what kind of symptoms were you displaying? So I I. I I I was uh, I was training to go to the Olympics, um, and in what discipline? Ju- judo and um, um, I um, I I was uh, I went away to England and trained full time, and but at the age of twenty two, I. Got um, um, more I trained, less mm. fit I got, and I didn't know mm. why there is um, didn't make sense. Yeah, mm. and I put on weight, and I I, I was trying to train, and um, that's um, messed with my head, and mm. uh, and I, I I couldn't compete anymore, and. Um, but that was uh, my heart um, doing his um, yeah. thing. I uh, I got a large heart from training too hard. And um, um, what kind of training? Um, intervals it- and the, uh, putting pressure on my heart mm. and uh, uh, running. Uh, uh, I I hate I. You know, um, when you come from the north side, there's a self doubt in your yeah. um, w- all around you. I thought if I trained extra hard, mm. I didn't believe I was better than my opponents, but I thought if I trained extra hard and pushed my heart to the limits. Mm. I would make up for it. Yeah. Mm. Um, can you remember the stroke happening? Yeah. Uh, um, I, I I was talking to uh, Timmy about it. Um, Saturday night, uh, uh, I was uh, watching Robert Heffernan in the 2008 Olympics and went to bed. And I got up and I was uh, um, all also start and I tried to log into my um, emails and I couldn't. I thought I was, uh, um, I thought to, I, I wrote this off to, I be, was being too tired. Yeah. And um, my wife said, uh, Eddie, what's wrong with you? And uh, I, I realized I couldn't talk and um, over the next um, three days, the stroke, um, um, my body um, um, got completely paralyzed and uh, slowly. And I, I, I was 
in um, holding the um, the scan for my brain, and uh, I just dropped it. I picked it up and just dropped it. But um, um, over the next three days, and stroke came um, was. Mm. Getting worse. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say this before. You're actually an amazing man, mm. you know, and that's the truth of it. You're an amazing man for what you're after achieving, like even for what you were pushing yourself to do. Go on to the Olympics. I didn't know the story about the Olympics. I didn't know. No. I know you were into martial arts, but I didn't know you were going on to the Olympics. And that's yeah. a massive achievement judo, in, like, in the, itself. Like, all martial arts are you know, obviously very violent, but I don't yeah. know, there's something extra tough about people that do judo. I I, 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 I did a lot of sports and uh, there's nothing as tough and as great as judo. As mm. I, I fair yeah. discipline as well, Eddie, I'd say. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, um, first discipline, yeah. yeah you're still a bit like a tank. Yeah, I, 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 I need to. I, 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 I lost three stone, and over Christmas, I put on one. I look at food and I put on weight. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, th- I think we all have that problem yeah. at the moment, don't we, James? Oh, stop the lights now, yeah. but yeah. um. <laughs> like what age were you when you had the stroke? Um, thirty three. That's rare, I'd mm. say. Yeah. I've never heard of somebody at that age having a stroke. Have you? I, I it's more common than we yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and uh, um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Is this um, is what you had a genetic condition? No, no, no. That's just uh, I pushed my heart too much. Really, and uh, I. I damaged my heart. Yeah. So, I, what, what, sorry, Timmy. What, I, I, what, what kind of advice would you give somebody that's out there? See, what, what would you do differently? Mm-hmm. See, at the time, I didn't know much about training, and there, there, um, kids do they uh, have the internet and mm. the resources? Mm. Um, uh, my. Uh, a good friend was on the podcast, Andla. Uh, oh, and, uh, yeah, 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 he's yeah. a uh, he's, a, he's a, the one of the best, uh, and he helps. He helped me. Um, I still um, helping me with a recovery and mm. the, over twelve years. Yeah. So, is that actually a thing? If you really push yourself that hard, that the heart can actually start. Yeah. Yeah, enlarged. Yeah, you know. Yeah, is uh, do you think something similar happens to footballers when they're on the pitch and they're so the running around for s- at fast speeds for six for sixteen seventeen kilometers per game? Mm. And do you think I, is I, it related I, in some yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you say this. So I, 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 my at the time of the my stroke. Um, my heart was nearly at heart failure, mm. and it they told me um, um, about two uh, t- three months I'd be dead if I didn't have the stroke. The clot went up, formed in my heart because uh, the blood wasn't pumping up t- out, and. And slowly travelled of my brain. That's unreal, isn't yeah. it? There's a a couple of um, actors that you know. Uh, do you ever watch the TV show The Witcher? It's mm. on. Uh, your man, he's he was also he yeah. also played Clark Kent in Superman. Yeah, he's English guy. He's built like a tank. But the, on YouTube, when you, you could follow his kind of workout routine, you know, when he's, yeah. when he, you know, he's in savage shape, like, but he's not in shape where you're looking and you're thinking he's on steroids because he's not lean and cut yeah. like the others, but he's still built like a thing. Yeah. But he says he's up at 5 a.m. and he has to do a lot of weight training and then go on set and look hard for the day and remember his lines. So what he does is he doesn't, he, he does low intensity training 
because it's not taxing on the central nervous system. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, the high intensity stuff is taxes your central nervous system. So then if you try to do days work after that, you're, you're going to be so fatigued and you're not going to mm-hmm. be able. So maybe like, maybe low intensity is the safe bet. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, there's, but there's people who know no, yeah. so, I know all yeah. the all the CrossFitters now are screaming yeah. at the at their phones. Shut up, James! You know that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, we get a CrossFitter on Monday days. Yeah. Do, you, do you know the? Do you know during this stroke, Eddie? Yeah. You know, um, did your wife know what to do? Did did was there any indication of what was actually even happening at that moment? No, no, I I didn't know I had a stroke until. Uh, three days afterwards, I, I thought I had in my mind, uh, I had within means, I, I thought, oh, I reacted to them. Mm. And it was, I, I, I finished the stroke and went um, in the hospital trolley in the mercy and with people passing up and down. It's crazy mm. that's unreal isn't yeah, it yeah to, for, to be at home for three days after it and, and no no I, I was in the hospital but yeah. yeah in the hospital for, yeah and it was, and, and it was still rated. happening yeah. at that stage yeah yeah and what do they give you do, do they give you some form of med meds or drip or I, something I, to, I think they, they um give me um a blood, a blood injection yeah. for the uh, so I don't have uh, another clot. And uh, uh, yeah, and at that stage, did you know that you had a problem with your arm and stuff? Uh, 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 it's I was slowly, visible? slowly um, getting worse. And I got a uh, fright. I, 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 I could see it was um, slowly getting worse and more, but I didn't know when it was stop. Mm. And I thought I... Uh, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't communicate with anyone. And um, the frightening thing was the uh, um, two weeks after the neuroscientists mm. or neurologists mm. came into me, and I, 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 I caught, um, I thought they were going to lock me away because yeah. I could, I knew. I was there mm. in my head and I couldn't, and I glued eye contact with him. Please don't, <laughs> don't <laughs> lock say me it. Away. Yeah, I, 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 uh, <laughs> That's understandable yeah, yeah. because you're thinking that they're, they're thinking yeah. that there's actually, you're going mad or after losing your marbles, mm. but they completely understand the process of the stroke yes. and they know exactly Thank where you God. are at that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're, and, they're amazing and people. They, 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 um, the fixed cycle size um, mm. symptoms were a small bit. I, I don't mind um, my voice and um, my um, arm and leg, but I uh, I got a phasia and from it and confusion mm. and that's hard. Mm. The, the, the heating um, things of with the yeah. hot stroke. A, a, a phase here is like um, dyslexia mm. on steroids. Really? Uh, uh, you can understand words and uh, you, you, uh, uh, you, you can comprehend yeah. words and... Uh, you, so you 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 were completely confumbled. So you yeah, just I, literally I, I'm, could. I'm still. Um, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm still. I I could say something to you and yeah. I think. Uh, I I said another thing uh, mm. and I can't write or read or yeah. Yeah, uh, Eddie, do you know when you're um. You're in good company here, anyway, with me. <laughs> <laughs> you're better English than I have to say that. But um, do you know when you're in it? When you're in a situation where you can't speak and you're losing your mobility in one side of your body, like w- what are you thinking? Like, are you thinking like, and 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 does that side then? Do you think are you are you losing the mind? Where's it going to end? Am I going to end up like paralyzed for the rest of my life? Like, yeah. it's just very frightening. All those things, but but I was. In hospital, till, and um, I couldn't 
move my body. I couldn't talk, but I was um, weirdly happy. I, I, I was the happy as I ever was in my life. And I, 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 I did a research into this. My um, problem size on my brain shut down and I was, I was in the now uh, um, for yeah. three months and it was amazing, amazing. And, and I keep trying to get back, get back. when my um, um, right size of brain or left side of brain got better. I had more problems and, mm. and I, 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 but it was amazing. That's, that, un, that's unreal. Yeah. But I, 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 I know, yeah. I, Just I fucking people I meditating was, for 20 I, years trying yeah, to get that. I thought I was uh, going mad because I, I couldn't talk and, um. And you didn't give a fuck? <laughs> but, uh, I, but I was happy. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, that's amazing. That's that actually is unbelievable. Yeah. Is that, is, is that, a known is, is that something that frequently so. happens? Yeah, I Ooh. think so. Yeah, that is absolutely yeah. amazing. Because like, I what can understand the, the, the yeah. importance of feeling like that. Oh, yeah. oh it's, just it's like you know if your um, you know, if your head was melted or something, and you pull out a canvas and you yeah. started to paint on the canvas before you know two three hours are gone. Yeah, and all your problems are gone as well because yeah. you're in that moment. It's like <laughs> imagine living in that moment for three months, yeah. nothing matters. No, yeah. that's a great place to be. It yeah. sounds like Eckhart Tolle when when he had his spiritual uh, awakening or experience or whatever people might want to call it. He was like he was in that period of of, of no mind for about two yeah. years. Oh, that's two unreal. years completely but, just completely just uh, cutting a no and just. Looking at mm. trees and, and people and 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 flowers and yeah. and just loving life and and he used to walk around and and just sit in park benches and just watch life go by. He hadn't got a care in the world, yeah. you know. Um, and, and and when when you were talking about your your experience, I was I was, I was trying to visualize that. Yeah, uh, the same thing nearly happening that. You you you're completely stripped back. No, you know, like you're 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 ill physically, yeah. and and your your mind is a little bit fumble, and yeah. and it's like ah, yeah. that clarity you know, is unreal. I just it's, it's so uh, I say, say is like in slow motion, and and and, mm. and it, uh, I try to get back to that. Uh, um, feeling mm. through mind fairness, but I, I, I found um, guided heat no therapy is it's the same thing as mind fairness, but mind fairness you choose and the uh, heat no therapy you told what to do, and I need to be told what yeah. to do because mind fairness. Um, my mind can be too busy, mm-hmm. and, uh, but guided uh, hypnosis brings me back. Right back. Yeah. Uh, like the idea of mindfulness is great. And maybe for people that don't know, like mindfulness is not just about closing your eyes and like, it's a difficult thing. It and it's something yeah. that you have to work on over time. And it can be very difficult, can't it? And it really depends on the, the human being that's att- doing it mm-hmm. because you might be somebody that had a really, really, really difficult life. You may be somebody who has ADHD and struggles to sit still. Mm. There's a number of different um, gray areas that meditate that are really difficult for for people in you know in meditation and mindfulness because they can't sit and focus because the minute they become aware of whatever is going on from. You know, they go into the negative or the critical yeah. part, part of their, their mind. And I'm speaking mm-hmm. from my own experience. Yeah. And it, it it's, it's like you're being re-traumatized the minute you close your eyes because the last thing, this body what that's holding all these trapped emotions, all these different energies from experiences, wants to sit still. It wants to keep going. Mm-hmm. It wants to be in complete control. And the minute you stop, 
all these things come to you. All the ne- negative stuff, the critical yeah. stuff, the fear, the guilt, the shame, and you're sitting there. But that is this, that is what they call um, the dark night of the soul. Yeah. Okay, it's it's when you're really, really going through all that stuff, mm. and you have to face your demons, yeah, and 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 stop fighting them, and and you know it's it, it's a tough period of of of, uh, of anybody's life. They, they jump into this mm. stuff, but it's also it's the way to happiness yeah. and yeah. it's the way to, to life and it's the way to freedom and it's the way to joy and love. You have to come through it to, to get to the other side, you know, yeah. but it's yeah. a battle. Yeah. I've it heard a, a few um, a few people give account of near death experiences mm. or when they think death is imminent, that they've never in their life had so much clarity and been in the moment. Yeah. And I wonder, is it maybe does does that path of the brain that affected you? Does that like in moments where you think death is coming, does that just shut down? And then you have that like almost yeah. peace, almost like, oh my God, yeah, problems are gone. And now you get a new, because when people go that close to death and come back, it gives them a new perspective. Yeah. And I think if that path of the brain was shut down for one second, it would give you clarity. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, my uh, stroke, was on the left side and, and that affects your, was, your right that doesn't yeah, yeah yeah and no one knows why that is and and um m- uh, where all the problems were and i had to rely on my uh, left s- or right, oh, right side to carry me through mm-hmm. and i i no problems. No. Not a bad shot. No. What was the recovery process like in terms I, of like I, you, you had to walk and talk yeah. and what was the hardest part of it? Um, I, it's still recovering, but the aphasia and confusion mm. and it's, it's very hard, mm. very hard. And uh, the... Do you have like a speech therapist and I do. occupational I, I, therapy? I, I used to, and I do my own things. And Anla uh, was a great help. Uh, still yeah. is. Uh. Anla's gym is Ackley Gym, yeah. over by Hanover Street, oh, yeah. Yeah. between mm-hmm. Hanover Street and the Cathedral and City Centre. Mm-hmm. And he was a previous guest. Yeah. Um, so check him out and check out that gym. Yeah. So I just wanted to give Anne a plug. Mm. Do you know I see on Instagram doing uh, kettlebells and all this stuff. Yeah. Can you lift more with one side than the other? Or how do you work I, with? I, 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 I have a 70% um, power in my right side. Yeah. But... Uh, Is your left side then solid as ever? Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, a bad option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I... Yeah, I... <laughs> Bit of uh, wear and tear from the judo and uh, yeah, 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 throwing people around the mat. Uh, <laughs> me throwing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do you know the? I'm just going to bring back one yeah. touch and we can one again. I just very, very curious about something you said there. We'll go about the left hand side of the brain, and then it works in the right hand side. Mm. How did it actually get better? Is does it just is it just something that comes back in time, or is is there something that has to happen? You, you'd be you, interested in, yeah. in this. I I talk. I was going mad, and yeah. I I I into a hospital bed. I said, I uh, I uh, imagine my finger lifting, and I closed my eyes and moved my finger, uh, and then it's moved. Mm. Oh, I didn't realize how that was the secret because yeah. I, I, I built neurons, um, new neurons, and uh, I got movement before I... Um, it actually happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, 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 that's why I think my... Um, Body, um, right and size is so good. So yeah, you your 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 brain is amazing yeah. and is 
constantly heals and heals and heals and finds different pathways mm. to the ones that's yeah you were imagining the more the movement before yes, it actually yeah, happened yeah, and you yeah. were teaching you were just you were you, you were manifesting it to yes, happen yes yes it's it's, it's like the, the the story of dr george spenza when before he became who he is now he was a chiropractor and um he came off a bike That's on right, an iron man yeah. and he, he burst all the, the, yeah. the lower the vertebrae in his back destroyed and he was told he'd never walk again and they wanted to put bars into his back the hole his back and he all the best the surgeons whatever you know and he started looking into doing it himself through visualization and that's what he done he rebuilt because he knew the bone structures of the back and the, yeah. the body from being a yeah. chiropractor and he was able to lie down and restructure his back yes through imagination and that's what he done it, it it should be taught yeah. more and more yeah, yeah. More, yeah. yeah. But even in um jordan spends as well you know like um using your power of your mind to heal your body but also to improve your circumstances of your life improve yeah. your your yeah. your your financial yeah. situation your relationships mm. you no know, like using uh, he talks about like using the energies around you know and frequencies and all these things you know and uh, and that could be good if you are positive mm -hmm. but it's a uh, um if you are a frame of mind negative yeah. take it can do a n number of damage it's yeah. uh, i i yeah. what well, i think i was lucky when i woke up and was positive mm. i i could be negative and you would have your you would have your bad days too obviously like those days that, that, oh, that, yeah. that would get you oh, down yeah. like but but the same what going back to what the two we were saying about both the negative and the positive there was one of one of the most important factors of that whole process was this okay and it's, it brings us back to mindfulness yeah. it's every single time he would start on the meditation lying on that mass developing a new spine right he would be brought away by toss you're never it's never going to happen you're destroyed you're, you, you should have got the surgery you know who's going to look after you for the rest of your life mm -hmm. you're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life and then he'd stop the minute he'd get the negative thought and he'd bring back to the start of the process again, back to the very, very beginning. And he'd go, and then it would happen again, and it happened again. And he mastered it. He kept doing it. He was yeah. doing this two, three, four hours a day, and just kept bringing himself back. Never kept continuing from the place he was He was cut yeah. off on, but he kept bringing it back. And the part in to not beat yourself up when your um, mind key. goes off, and you keep doing that and you get um longer and longer and longer with your, your mm -hmm. no thinking yeah. it's about bringing that compassion into it the, the compassion is is being nice to yourself because you know when we make a mistake in life mm. we tend to give ourselves shit over it fuck it you're that, everybody was right you're fucking useless or whatever but when you bring that compassion in is you it's okay it's normal for the mind to go off and want to take control and, and want to think about tomorrow or what you done yesterday or what you ate or who you said what or who you hurt it's normal yeah because it wants control you know so it's about always just just telling yourself it's okay i'm gonna bring it back here and it's okay it's normal for the mind to do this and and, and stop the critical you know so you're one of the most well-known photographers around one of the most popular if i can say that you know uh, your services are in demand photography and videography is something you clearly have a, a, a talent for did you pick this up in this stage of your life or did you have the interest previously no i i i, I um i uh, uh i um based my recovery around cycling and um, I never realized how beautiful Ireland was. And I said, oh, I, I have to get a camera. And I fell in love 
with how hard it was to take pictures. Mm. And um, it's not the actual photography itself, but how hard and how um, complex and, and uh, the, knowing the lights and mm. the cameras and inside out and that's what got in me onto it. Mm. Yeah. Even we had we were having issues here with our own cameras and Eddie gave us a bit of his time to come down and set them up and we had no issues since. No, oh, I'm not a bother. But it's like cameras yeah. are complicated, aren't they? Yeah. It's like looking up a dog's hole for me it's, looking at the menu with that thing. It's <laughs> not like a pressing a button at all. Yeah. No, the more yeah. the, most definitely not. Especially as the quality of the ca- uh, of the camera gets higher and higher and yeah. higher and yeah. more difficult. To be yeah. Yeah. Do you love it? Um, I do. I do. And uh, I... I uh, I, um, people say to me, um, I, I, um, I love to do what you doing, uh, mm. for, but you wouldn't, cause you you wouldn't, um, you would be doing it. You would be learning. Yeah. They like the idea of having a camera and a photographer, but they, they. Don't really love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I I like what you do, and I like the idea of doing it. You know, like the, the creativity and all. I love that. But you know what I think would would be tough if I was in that position. The pressures of somebody paying you a financial sum of money to record their wedding and then making yeah. the balls of it. There's a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. So I I think amateur photographers. Um, this is my uh, definition. Uh, amateur photographers um, practice to learn. Professional photographers practice to not make any mistakes. Mm. So, but there's some buzz in that, um, mm. the pressure. And, yeah. yeah, 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 I can imagine. Can you tell us briefly what life was like before the stroke, where, where you grew up? What what were you working family? Um, I I I um I grew up in Nakinihini in Dunmer Gardens, and I um Vincent's uh, the club yeah. was a big part of my life. Um, um, growing up with, with Keith Rickin and Tommy yeah. Gould and uh, Tommy Gould, you, you don't. People don't know what he's done for kids yeah. around, and mm-hmm. the the sheer sheer um, pride um, in the uh, way he was from is uh, infectious. It yeah. is, yeah, it yeah. is. And were you a GA player yourself, so I was bad. I but <laughs> I, I, I love your honesty. I, I, I loved it. I loved it. I say you'd be good at Gaelic football, tumbling fellas upside down. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I loved it. Um, yeah. what, what were you working at before you had the stroke? Um, I, I I was a manager in, in bar, and I had um um I had a security company me with uh, my buddy FD Murphy who, and um I got too sick mm-hmm. and I I I for 10 years before the stroke I I c- couldn't even function mm. uh, did you when when you started putting on the weight you know and you were training so much did, it, did anything like maybe an overactive thyroid or anything like that ever come into play? I, I went to the doctors yeah. and doctors and they, um, and they never, never not, checked your heart or anything like that? Um, yeah, not being too hard on, mm. on but it's hard to my, find my yeah. heart disease. Okay. Yeah, uh, and a lot of people... Um, um, going on Dyke's nose. I was lucky. Is sudden death syndrome, yeah. but the stroke saved me. Jeez. So, so yeah, 
Yeah. So would you consider yourself lucky? Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because you would you consider like from the outside in looks like you've got a pretty good life. You look like you're very happy and you're content yeah. and you're very. I, I have a brilliant wife and kids and. Uh, yeah. You bring a lot of happiness to people with your photography. Yeah. You know, pe- people oh, really yeah. like. Mm. So always Eddie Hennessy, Eddie Hennessy. Yeah. You know, pe- pe- people love your work yeah. and you're very Thanks. creative. And if people want to see your work, they can see on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you anything you'd want to finish with? Um, no. Oh, I, I, I do um, a lot of um, um, AVKC work on disabled on chair pioneers. You do so. I, I. There's no um, government support or policies for um, disabled on chair pioneers, but we, we um, dub, uh, TU Dublin um, um, ran a course um, for persons with disabilities yeah. um, to start uh, their own business. And I was involved in that. And um, it was a groundbreaking for Ireland and groundbreaking for most of Europe. And um, it was very self-self-fill. And, yeah. um, but w- w- we need the government to... W- w- help people and uh, they're missing out a whole core heart of people um, to build their uh, community. Yeah. But photography wasn't about m- making money for me. It was giving m- me back my self-worth mm. um, which the stroke took his way and I, I, I felt, I felt, I, I felt um, when I was doing photography, uh, I felt n- almost normal. Mm. And um, uh, one thing I say, um, uh, um, people look at um, disability or you can't be disabled and be better than an um, able body for uh, the person. person yeah. And that's not right. I, I'm still disabled and I can uh, I can um, hold my own with the photography and I can create a business and compete with the best. But... Um, we have to ask as, as uh, all of us as a society to um, push on uh, business and people with disabilities starting their own business. Uh, yeah, so wouldn't it be great if there was like some incentives, you know, yeah. tax incentives, grants and stuff to get people up uh, and running? Not even that. Uh, Recognition. Mm. So, so, mm. uh, so the, there's a small uh, s- support, but you uh, you grabbing on of a, another support service. They has to be recognition. You've um, disabled onto a partner, and you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you are you part of like a national network of disabled entrepreneurs? Oh, that, it, I, 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 when I started my campaign, I, I, I was the only one, and and I came across Tommy's Professor Thomas Cooney, and he has a TED talk about uh, this uh, disabled entrepreneurs, and I contact him, and um, he's uh, running the course in Dublin, and um, he has the same um, frame of mind as me, and um, see, no one 
tells a disabled person what they can do mm. and you 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 need to tell them what they t- can do to open their life of course but bring it back to the start it gave me back my filled worth yeah of course i tell you for somebody that's come fumbled you have a great way to articulate whatever's going on for you because you are very very good at getting your point across because i I understood (laughs) absolutely everything you said you know and and if anyone wants to disabled person wants to um get into business there's a next course in tu dublin um online course email Tabnis dot kuni at you. Yeah, not about, and look, we link the yeah. email in the description yeah. as well. Just make it Thanks handy for, for people. Yeah. No problem. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks. It's been a real pleasure talking Thanks to you. Really. And you've been a friend of the podcast for a while. You've been very supportive, and you took a few shots for myself and Timmy. People will recognise uh, myself and Timmy's logo on Spotify, Apple, Aircast, and that one. Eddie took that shot. Yeah. And a lot of the shots we use in our promotional stuff is, is your work as well. So um, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed coming on the podcast. I did. I did. Yeah. We've been wanting to co- cover uh, disabilities for a while, but it wasn't so easy to get the right guests because you know, accessibility in this podcast studio isn't great. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of flights of stairs, you know. So um, I hope you're the first of many. And if there's more people out there with disabilities of varying degrees and they want to come on, just yeah. give us a shout. Um, yeah. But um, best of luck with everything going forward and we'll Thanks. see you at the live show in the Opera House. Yeah. Yeah. And, you're, and, and you're also an example for, for others that have gone through it, that there is there is hope, you yeah. can change, yeah. get the right people into your life that will help you like Enla. Yeah. What's his name? Enla. Yeah. Enla, yeah. yeah. Like he's an amazing oh, guy just, and what they 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 train people with disabilities I, in that yeah, gym. Yeah, yeah. So look I, them up. I, I was training yeah. there and I w- looks um, next to me was an uh, international triathlete. He's, he has a gym built around inclusion mm-hmm. and doesn't matter where you recovering from a stroke and are you a top triathlete. This is amazing. It's yeah. unbelievable. And well done. Ella. Yeah, uh, brilliant. Well done. The Pride of Nakanahini, Eddie Hennessy. <laughs> Thanks a million. Thank you, Thanks. Eddie. Thanks. See you later, everybody. God bless.